If you are looking to build a PC in the next few months, which with the current price drops, I feel it's going to be a better time than ever to be building a PC late in 2022, then is this DP503 Dark League from Antec going to satisfy your needs? Now in today's video, Antec did decide to offer me a sponsorship for this video and I said, look, I'll take it, but I'm going to still, if there's anything that I find wrong with it, I'm going to let the audience know. And they were more than happy with that. And this came off the back of me taking a look at the DF800 Flux case, which they sent over for me to use in a build a couple of months ago. And I was actually blown back by how Antec have made their cases so easy to build in, whether you don't like sharp edges or if you need extra room at the back for cable management, which in this case, they have a 23 mil clearance at the back. Now, if you guys have known me for a while, I am not the best at cable management, but these Antec cases, I can pull off some really clean cable management, even with all those extra RGB cables, which in this particular build, we've got a 360 mil rad up the top and a 240 mil rad at the front which one is cooling the GPU, that's the 240 mil, that's the RTX 3080. And then at the top, we've got a 360 mil cooling the i7-12700 overclocked on this B660M Riptide motherboard. And overall, the temperatures on this build impressed me because if you're going with a case, you're either going to come into three scenarios. And that is, you're going to come into a case that's a sarcophagus, there's no airflow, it's going to absolutely suck. Or you're going to come into a case that's mediocre, temperatures don't really change versus say an open air test bed. Or you're going to come into a case where if you close it all up, the airflow is that good and it's been thoughtfully planned out that the temperatures are actually going to be lower with the side panel on versus off. And this is exactly the case in this build. We've tested out three different scenarios and this is the GPU only in Fermark, which this whole build will pull around 435 watts from the wall. And this is where we got 55 degrees versus 53 degrees in a 26 degree ambient environment. So having the side panel on gave us a two degree drop. And then we move things over to the CPU only. Here is where we drop the temperatures down one degree. Now our CPU was running very hot. This is an overclocked 12700 running close to 5.1 gigahertz. But it is good to see that there's a difference on both the CPU and GPU tested out independently. Then we move over to both. And here is where we got power consumption going around 670 watts full system from the wall. So this test, when we test out Cinebench and Fermark at the same time, really puts a lot of heat inside the case. So here we had 56 degrees versus 57 and 100 degrees versus 101. So you'll notice that the CPU and GPU both heated up a bit, but that's because there's a lot of extra heat versus the, both the individual tests in order to push out of this case. And the reasons for the temperatures coming out good in this build is actually twofold. The first being the mesh front here, Antec are calling it their X-shaped design. I'm just calling it a good design where the airflow is non-restricted and also it catches the dust on the mesh so you don't need the dust filter and that allows the RGB also to come out nice and bright out the front. Now the fans is the second reason and they are three 120 mil fans. They do a great job in terms of balancing out noise and airflow. And while I'm doing this video, I've got this build on. This is how they pretty much sound most of the time, except for that combined test where we did go up to 700 watts. So this build has the option to mount two 360 mil rads inside, which for a mid tower ATX case is actually very impressive. And then we've also got that option to stabilize our GPU with the GPU catcher. So if you're running a really heavy three slot or two and a half slot GPU, that weighs in over a good 1500 grams, for example, this GPU holder will do a great job of stopping GPU sag. Though one important thing to note with these temperatures, although they look impressive, I did have to add in an outtake fan, which it didn't come included with this build. So if it's one thing to critique for Antec, I'd like to see them add an outtake fan on their builds by default. Even if it's not RGB, like this one here, it's not RGB, because at the top here, I actually mounted three RGB fans, which I ran off the included controller at the back of the build, which accepts the standard five volt, three pin connections. 
And you've also got the option to then change the RGB via a button on the top of your case. And now the big advantage to using a manual switch of, for RGB on your build is that you don't have to then install bloatware that a lot of motherboard manufacturers will include, or even uh, companies like Corsair, they include this software, which you then uh, have it installed and it starts to actually drop your performance when you're in games. So I actually prefer having a manual hardware solution. Now this control at the back, it's pretty impressive in that it supports up to six five volt three pin connections for RGB or addressable RGB, and then six four pin PWM fan headers which can then run off a single motherboard connection from your motherboard and that's powered via SATA so you don't have to worry about your motherboard not being able to power six fans off one hub for example. Then when it comes to putting a build inside you've got the option to even mount up to extended ATX if you wish to you've got eight rubber grommet holes for cable management and then down the bottom here you've also got a PCIe cutout if you want to route your PCIe wires through that way i decided to route them through the bottom i've got a shorter card here with the water cooled card so i thought it looked better if i just ran it out the back the, the final part of this build is the front io which is actually really impressive you've got two type a usb 3 ports as well as a type 3.2 gen c and then you've got your mic and your headphone jack separated which i do prefer since sometimes i'm only using headphones without a headset and I just like to plug in that three prong, which if there's only a four prong, you have to get a three pin splitter, which a Y splitter, which they're annoying. They are cheap, but it's always annoying to have to go get one of those when you can just split the ports individually and have it work this way. Then you've got your uh, hard disk drive indicator as well as your power LED indicator. Then you've got your LED button. That's to change the addressable RGB if you've plugged it off the port that's included. And then you get your power button. Of course, you don't want to press that as it might turn your build off. So now that we've talked this case up quite a bit, it's time to talk about the price point, and that is $120. That's what Antec is asking for the DP503. And the good thing about this price point is when I checked in Australia, it's about 167 Aussie dollars, which if we take $120 and exchange that to Aussie dollars and even add on 10% tax, which is what the Australians have to pay on a case, that's actually a really fair price internationally. So it is good to see that there's no funny buggers involved in the process if you're trying to buy this overseas. And some companies, for instance, I have seen very huge disparities in pricing between USD and local currencies. Though by far and large, the biggest win for the DP503 is how easy it is to build in this thing. I got this build done in next to no time, but I felt in the end I had a build that came out looking for instance, the cable management, like someone who spent a whole day doing cable management. I did this cable management in literally five minutes. Everything just went where it should. They had included zip ties. They also had included reusable, uh, three reusable cable ties too. And because as you know, Tech yes City, I used a 700 watt non-modular $10. It's FSP though, so it's really good. $10 power supply. Uh, we put all the cables in the back and we had ample room for those spare cables. Though if you want to use a bigger power supply, then here's where they've also got good options where you can take out that drive cage, which mounts two 3.5 inch drives. And then you can use an extended power supply and gain more room there. Say for instance, you're using a 1200 watt non-modular power supply that you picked up on a really good deal, then that will allow you to still get a really clean look. There's also two 2.5 inch mounting bays. So in total, you can have four SSDs or two hard drives and two SSDs in this build for four drives in total. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the DP503. I'll put some links in the description below if you want to check out more info. Also, thanks to Antec for sponsoring out this video where I feel like their cases are actually really good. They're coming a long way and they're just trying to get the word out about their cases and how good they are. So I'm really impressed with this one. I was impressed with the DF800 and I've been pretty impressed with their power supplies in the past. That's one thing that I've mainly known Antec for was their really good value power supplies. So it's no surprise that they're bringing in really good value when it comes to cases too. Though I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, not just on this case, but also Antec as well. 
And we've got a question of the day here from the comments, which comes from Broadsword. And they ask, new ROG Strix 6700 XT USD 460, yay or nay? And for me personally, that would be a nay, just because I'm going to be looking at the best used deals on RX 6000 series cards as well as RTX 3000 series cards. But I feel like the 6700 XT is going to be one of those cards that is going to be sold in droves from crypto miners. So that's going to put pressure on the new prices as well. So I feel like they will come down a little bit more. But of course, it's up to you. Can you wait any longer? And if you feel like 460 USD is a pretty good price for an ROG Strix, then that's your choice to make. For me personally, I'm going to be looking elsewhere for better deals. Hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content as always, then you know what to do. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.